I think there is a connection between left-wing authoritarianism and dogmatic defense of the globe belief. The overlap is shocking. I've been arguing with a globe believer, rolling my boulder, formerly known as Sisyphus. I don't think I've ever heard him say a true word. You know, and I'm not trying to be overly dramatic in that regard. I've met people in my clinical practice and otherwise who were temperamentally incapable of any gesture or any word that was actually genuine. And that's a consequence of long practice. I think he's at least narcissistic, at minimum. And I think he's enabled by the useful idiots of the liberal left. And I actually think that's a very widespread problem and probably more typical of Canada now than any other developed country, much to our chagrin. So there's a developing body of research on left-wing authoritarianism. Now the social psychologists, who are a pretty woke bunch, denied that left-wing authoritarianism existed from the end of World War II until 2016. And when the first work on left-wing authoritarianism came out. Now, the way you study something like political belief is you take a large corpus of questions about political attitude, several hundred, let's say, and you subject them to a statistical analysis that tells you how they sort. And so imagine you're likely to agree with one question, then you're more likely to agree with another related question if you're disagree with the question, you're, there will be related questions that you're likely to disagree with. Uh, a sophisticated computer program, it's kind of a primitive AI system by the way, can sort those questions and then you can tell if there's a clump of them. And at the time, 2016, the idea that there was such a thing as a politically correct corpus of beliefs was derided as a right-wing conspiracy, so we decided to test that and it was clear that you could identify a group of beliefs that were progressive, let's say, but then you could identify a variant of that that combined hypothetically progressive goals with authoritarianism, which was really the willingness to use fear and power and compulsion to force. So then there's an, there's an alliance, let's say, between compassion and force, and that makes you a left-wing authoritarian. Now, we looked at what predicted whether or not you would be a left-wing authoritarian. And we found that the biggest predictor was low verbal intelligence. Right, and it was a walloping predictor. It was more associated with left-wing authoritarianism than it was with academic performance. And those are basically the same thing, right? General cognitive ability and academic performance. So to find a relationship that was even more powerful was quite the shock. So when you ask yourself, how can people be clueless enough to buy the politically correct line, the answer is, well, they're not very sophisticated verbally. And so if you offer them a solution that's a one-stop, fits-all solution, it's all power, then they buy that because it's a comprehensive explanation for the world. There's a self-serving aspect to it and they have no capacity for critical thought. The second best predictor was being female. The third best predictor was having a feminine temperament, independent of whether you were male or female. And the next best predictor was having ever taken a course that was explicitly politically correct in its aims. So, we were well on the way to publishing that, although that's when my career blew up and it only ended up being produced in a master's degree format. But since then, there's been a lot of additional work done on left-wing authoritarianism. And so, people have been looking at the relationship between left-wing authoritarianism and something called the dark first triad and then tetrad. Okay, so in British Columbia there was a professor named Robert Hare and Hare studied criminal psychopaths. He was really the first person to define psychopathy psychometrically. Pred predatory parasite is what a psychopath is, someone who will take what you have and will live off you if they can. That's a predatory parasite. And he studied the serious ones, the ones that were in prison, and hundreds of them. And then his students started to study subclinical psychopathy. So the same traits at a lower level in the general population. And there are different disciplines and industries that attract people with a more psychopathic bent. Media, politics, entertainment, um, 
medicine, possibly especially surgery, we'll get back to that. And they found that subclinical psychopathy manifested itself in three manners. Narcissism, so that's the desire for unearned social status, right, and, and the desire for constant attention. Machiavellianism, so if you're talking to a Machiavellian, all he's ever trying to figure out is what he can get from you and will craft his words accordingly, right? He used words instrumentally. And psychopathy, which we already touched on. And then, as a consequence of further analysis, the researchers ended up adding sadism to that because th those three weren't bad enough. And so sadism is positive delight in the suffering of others. And uh, lulls culture online. LOL culture, lulls culture, that's a manifestation of sadism, right? And we know too, the researchers who have been investigating this area have shown that the real online troll demon types are very high in the dark tetrad traits, so they're enabled online. Anyways, the relationship between dark tetrad personality traits and left-wing authoritarianism is so high that they're probably indistinguishable on the measurement front. And so what that means is that all this nonsense about compassion is the manipulations of snakes pulling in the useful idiots who perhaps are genuinely compassionate to, uh, what would you say, to further their unbelievably narrowly self-centered and destructive agenda. There's nothing glorious about incivility, but there's very little to distinguish excessive niceness from weakness. And the problem with being nice, and this is a technical problem because niceness is associated with trait agreeableness, is that agreeable people are cannon fodder for psychopaths. And biologists have modeled this. So, for example, if you put together automated communities of reciprocal cooperative traders, they do very well. You know, they, the whole pot expands. But if you throw one psychopath into the mix, he takes everything. And the reason for that is that if you're too agreeable, the dark tetrad types, the predatory parasites, they'll take you out. And they'll use your compassion as a weapon against you. I mean, we know that the, the people who suffer from the psychopathologies or manifest the psychopathologies that are associated with quasi-psychopathic traits are very much prone to using victimization as a weapon. So... I don't believe that any of the conundrum that we're in is unmanageable if we become aware of the tactics used. So dealing with these trolls trying to obfuscate the topic, you know, is in no way unmanageable. That is why the 24-7 Flat Earth Discord server has rules. You can find them at the top of the server under hashtag welcome. Truth should fear no scrutiny. This has been a recording of Jordan Peterson with a little AI magic at the start and end to give context to the topic of the server. And so the AI parts do not reflect the actual views or experiences of Jordan Peterson, but is rather intended to draw attention to the striking similarities between the two. As you spend time in this server, this will become very obvious. There are thousands of hours of recordings. It is a veritable feast for a clinical psychologist and critical thinker. But the server is also a communal hub of like-minded individuals from all walks of life, all trying to contribute. Best part is, as a community, they ask for nothing besides following the rules which are designed to counter dark tetrad linguistic tactics that are used to manipulate and prey on people's biases or good intentions. It is an insidious corruption. But if you want to discuss the shape of our world in a reasonable manner, without fallacies or manipulative tactics, whether unknowingly or knowingly. Just know we will hold people to a rigid standard of logic. So being honest with yourself and us is the best option. To join the 24-7 panel and discuss the nature of the earth. Click the link on YouTube or Rumble and get verified. Thank you.